HomePod has been out for three years now, and it's obviously the best smart speaker in the world. <laughs> but when writing the script for this video, Apple announced that they are killing off HomePod. Let's just take it back. It's absolutely beautiful, and we call it HomePod. When the original HomePod was actually announced, there was this really big expectation on the shoulders of the HomePod because Apple had finally done their smart speaker and were joining the market with Amazon and Google. And everyone thought, well, this is it. This is gonna be the best of the best. And then it gave itself that problem where it really wasn't the best at anything. Even three years later, until this week, the HomePod was still priced at £279. And if you know anyone that's bought a brand new HomePod from Apple in the last year or so, just check that they're okay because no one should have been buying a brand new one, especially at that price. Obviously though, since the original HomePod, we now have the HomePod mini in the last year or so, and that is £200 less, and it gives you almost all the exact same features that original HomePod gave you. And the HomePod mini has done fairly well. It was really hard to get hold of one of these for months. But with the release of HomePod mini, it kind of caused a problem because you couldn't stereo pair an original HomePod and a HomePod mini. So if you had an Apple TV, you couldn't connect them both to have that stereo sound, which just seemed a little bit silly. And this video was meant to be one of those long-term reviews about the HomePod, but it's probably gonna turn into a video of what the HomePod could have been, but never was. There are some really good things about the original HomePod, and one of those good things is that the sound quality that this gives you is honestly, it's incredible. It's so much better than anything else that you can get, especially from Google or Amazon. And that was the big seller for Apple. This was not a smart assistant or smart speaker first. It was a speaker that could give you incredible sound that had Siri built in. And they spent a lot of time in the original keynote for this explaining how good the sound is, how it can fit into every single room. And Siri was an add-on to that. But Apple made it really difficult for themselves because they did, first of all, outprice a lot of people for the HomePod. And second of all, if you wanted to hear that really good music and you wanted to ask Siri to do it, then you had to only use Apple Music. So people that have been using Spotify for years but wanted a HomePod and had everything Apple but didn't have Apple Music had to either switch over or just do without. And even three years on, you still can't ask Siri to play directly from Spotify. And you can play Spotify, of course you can. You can use AirDrop and that's the only way you can do it. You can't link a Bluetooth device over to this or you can't use the HomePod's Bluetooth. You have to use Apple Music or you need to go and use Spotify through AirPlay. And that just adds that extra step which doesn't seem as simple and as easy as you'd want the HomePod to be. Once you get through that barrier and you decide Apple Music or Spotify and you finally hear that music, then you can understand why this speaker was so expensive. It has everything to make it sound as good as it can in any sort of room. So if you're in a big room, it will fill that space. If you're in a smaller room, it maybe is a bit too loud. But the sound of the original HomePod was its big selling point. When we turn and have a look at design, I still think that now, Apple's HomePod was probably a bit further ahead than the design of any of the other speakers at the time. And it's probably my favorite design of one of those home assistants. It came in two colors of the white and that space gray, and it just fits seamlessly pretty much anywhere into the home and didn't look necessarily like a speaker. It just looked like it fit in. So you could have it in your front room and it would fit in seamlessly. You move it to the bedroom and it still looks really good. And that's something that a lot of these smart assistants don't really look like. The new Google Nest looks a little bit like the HomePod and that's probably my second favorite looking speaker at the moment, but the design of that speaker, of that HomePod, was probably a couple of years ahead of its time. There's no noticeable buttons on the HomePod. You have that small glass screen at the top where you can see into the heart of Siri and you've got your volumes up and down next to it. But besides that, it's almost like a flush design. With all of the good things of the HomePod, there of course are some letdowns and you know it was coming because the biggest letdown to this smart speaker is the smart side of it. It's Siri. If you were to buy a HomePod, you need to realize that it's not really to be having fun with, if that makes sense. So if you want, you can ask Google a load of funny questions. It'll give you funny answers. But this is something more to help lifestyle rather than 
family. If you want to turn things like lights off with its HomeKit integration, then this is probably one of the biggest selling points of the HomePod. But if you want to have fun with the HomePod, you're not going to have fun. If you want to ask it silly questions, it's not going to give you silly answers. It's probably not going to give you any answers. That is something that you need to go to Google or Amazon for. But then the downside of having HomeKit integration with this is that all HomeKit stuff is really expensive. Like if you want to get Philips bulbs, they're maybe 40 or 50 pounds. Yet if you had something that was like the Google Nest, you can go and get Bluetooth bulbs that cost maybe five or six pounds, but they don't work as well as the HomeKit one. So there's a bit of an upside and a bit of a downside to it. You can ask Siri simple questions and you will get simple answers, but if you ask it anything a little bit more expansive, you don't get it. There's just something missing with Siri and I can't put my finger on it. It's like having a really good roast dinner where you have the best roast potatoes, but you serve it and it doesn't have gravy. No one wants a roast dinner without gravy. I've had problems for ages where if I asked it to make a call, it would say my iPhone isn't nearby, yet my iPhone's in my hand. It would say that there needs to be a software update on the iPhone when it's up to the latest software. And that's something that got fixed, but I had to go into it and I had to reset HomePod and it worked for a couple of weeks and then we had that problem again. So there are things that were just never quite right. And then it comes to another thing that's really annoying that Siri doesn't keep listening. So if you ask it a question and it gives you the answer, it won't listen for maybe a follow-up question. It just stops and you have to ask the Siri part of that again. And that's just something that is just really annoying. Just add that as a feature in. But then you look at things like handoff and handoff is incredible. If you've never used it, it means if you're listening to something on Apple Music or a podcast on your phone, you can just go and tap the top of the HomePod and it will take it over from that exact second that you're listening to it on your phone and start playing it on the HomePod in your apartment or in your bedroom. But as cool as that feature is, it doesn't always work. You have to fiddle around with the exact point on the HomePod for it to actually move that stuff over. And by the time you've done it, yeah, you just don't want to listen anymore. It's pointless. Or you've given up or you've just gone to sleep. But it is things like that that are almost really good, but just don't quite work. And if you say the her Siri part and you've got an iPhone and an Apple Watch and an iPad with you, you never know what's going to give you that answer. Sometimes the HomePod is not the main device that gives you that answer. And that again, is a small thing, but it is an annoying thing. And then this is where we come to what the HomePod could have been. It could have been an incredible piece of hardware if Apple had A, first of all, just did it right with the pricing and made it a little bit more smart. Like I've had it for two years and I, there's something about that I love. I love the HomePod, but it's just not really made for anyone. No one needs a HomePod. HomePod mini has come and has given people a bit more of a chance to go, you know what, 99 pounds, let's give it a go. Let's see what it's like. But no one wanted to take that big step of 279 pounds or 350 pounds when it was first launched to get the HomePod. And once you got it at that price, you looked at it, you saw it, you were probably a little bit disappointed unless you loved music and then you wanted that incredible sound. I think it's a shame that Apple have actually killed this off now officially it is dead, which means there'll only be a couple more software updates for it. Who knows when it'll lose all its functionality at some point because that will happen. It's a very Apple thing to do. But the bigger HomePod was better and it is better than a HomePod mini. It's just a shame that Apple never quite got it right. There was just those things that they didn't do right off the bat, which really set this behind a lot of other things. But it's kind of rest in peace to the HomePod at this point. I'm curious though to how many of you have a HomePod or use things like that and what you think of actually using it after the past couple of years. I actually even ran a poll on Twitter and surprisingly, most people used a HomePod, which I wasn't expecting. I was expecting most people to use a Google Mini because they're free or one of those Google Nest ones. But let me know what you think in the comments anyway below. And if you enjoyed the video, why not like it and then subscribe to the channel as well. And I will see you in a bit.